So I said all this and they all agreed and we came up to the podium and then during the introduction I discovered all three of them are engineers. <laughs> so you can imagine I'm in complete disgrace now, they're never going to call me back to this university. But anyway, um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's nonetheless to their credit that despite the Chancellor, Pro-Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor all being engineers, they have hosted a conference here on India's assorted cultures. And I think that's a very healthy sign because it, it actually is a uh, reminder uh, to everybody who values what has now become the conventional form of education that indeed in our country the study of the humanities has its place and that there is no substitute for a liberal education. I won't go on about it because I know my friend Tabish is going to actually address this issue in his uh, presentation later. So I'd, I'd let him articulate it as a, as a, as a writer. Uh, my topic is slightly beyond the scope of the conference. I'm a bit embarrassed by it. Um, but I think it's probably because you have enough writers and literature scholars and others talking about aspects of culture in the literal sense. I've been given a slightly broader task, which is to talk about, if you like, an important aspect of culture in India, which is our political culture. And that is in the shape of, of, of addressing the question of Nehruji's relevance in India today. Because you know the four men embodied the vision of free India in the 1940s leading up to and beyond independence. Mahatma Gandhi, Jawaharlal Nehru, Sardar Vallabhai Patel, and Bhim Rao Ambedkar. Gandhiji's moral rectitude allied to Nehru's political passion, fashioned both the strategy and the tactics against British rule. Sadar Patel's firm hand on the administration integrated the nation and established peace and stability. Ambedkar's erudition and legal acumen helped translate the dreams of a generation into a working legal document, the constitution, that laid the foundations of our enduring democracy. And while the world was disintegrating into fascism, violence, and war, Gandhi taught the virtues of truth, nonviolence, and peace. While the nation reeled from bloodshed and communal carnage, Ambedkar preached the values of constitutionalism and rule of law. While parochial ambitions threatened national unity, Patel led the nation to a vision of unity and common purpose. While mobs marched in the streets, baying for revenge, Nehru's humane and non-sectarian vision inspired India to yearn again for the glory that had once been hers. Of the four, I think one can argue that Gandhi and Nehru stood out. Despite differences over both tactics, Nehru wanted independence immediately, whereas Gandhi believed that Indians had to be made ready for their own freedom and differences over philosophy because the agnostic Nehru had little patience for the Mahatma spirituality, the two men proved a formidable combination. Gandhiji guided Nehru to his political pinnacle. Nehru in turn proved an inspirational campaigner as president of the Indian National Congress, electrifying the nation with his speeches and his tireless travel. Upon the Mahatma's assassination in 1948, just five months after independence, Nehru, as the country's first prime minister, became the keeper of the national flame, the most visible embodiment of India's struggle for freedom. Gandhi's death could have led Nehru to assume untrammeled power. Instead, he spent a lifetime immersed in the democratic values Ambedkar had codified trying to instill the habits of democracy in his people. A disdain for dictators, a respect for parliamentary procedures, and abiding faith in the constitutional system. 